Paolo, thank you very much for accept, accepting our invitation to come to, to this event. It's really a great pleasure to have you here, particularly because I know how, how thoughtful you are about um, a lot of the, the issues that surround the idea of uh, regenerative medicine using stem cells. And um, early on, you and I were talking about different problems that need to be solved in, ter in order for this field to really prosper. And, and broadly speaking, they are uh, financial, uh, biological, and, um, and procedural, organizational, about how to actually go and do these, these trials and do, do, um, get, get these products to the market. From each of those three areas, which specific problems would you highlight as particularly challenging for the field? Okay, do we have a week or two to address this? Because it, the, the number of issues is endless. First of all, thank you for having me here. It's great to participate in any kind of debate about these urging, burning issues. Let me start with the biological slash medical difficulties. Stem cells uh, are expected to be a success in a number of extremely complicated medical problems. And this is based on a few examples of historical success stem cell did have in the clinic already. The best known is bone marrow transplantation, which is based on the biology of hematopoietic stem cells. The second best known is the replacement of skin, of skin in patients with burns or other surface epithelia. Uh, the problems begin when we want to use the principle of stem cells for tissues that are structurally more complicated than blood, which is a fluid, or surface epithelia, which are surfaces. When we're out to tackle problems in the brain, heart, muscle, bone, we're always dealing with systems which are inherently comp complex and made more so by the effects of disease itself. So that means that the idea of using stem cells to directly regenerate uh, magically normal organs out of diseased organs needs to be carefully uh, revised and fine-tuned. We need to learn a lot more in each and any of these areas because this is where the major medical issue resides. Let me give you an example. When you have a, the, the effects of a heart attack, the major problem is the persistence of a scar. So you cannot simply think of a stem cell application in the heart as a problem of getting your cells to make the desired heart cells. It is also a problem of getting rid of the scar. And that is most typically ignored in all hastily attempts to translate knowledge into the clinic. Is there enough, um, enough dialogue between scientists who understand the biology of stem cells and clinicians who, who look at these, these patients, for example, the ones that, are, that know that the, the scar is a big problem for these people, for them it's, it's somewhat obvious. I wonder if there's enough conversations between them and the, the scientists who are doing the stem cell work. Well, there is, a, there is a lot of conversation, but the conversation is missing a topic, which is in, in sore need to be addressed. So the conversation is typically involving one party that focuses on strictly biological aspects at the single cell level. Can we push our stem cell to make the neuron which we need? And on the other side, the clinician is concerned with aspects that are more directly into the clinical trial facet of the business, which is how many patients, which endpoints, how do we go around in that arena? The missing point in the conversation is specifically the consideration of diseased organs and how we revert that. Now, it's often said that regenerative medicine requires, or translational medicine at large, requires a new kind of professional profile. Well, the professional profile that is specifically required is exactly one that can bridge this gap and address this topic of the conversation and actually bring it into the conversation, which is the missing point so far.
In addition to, to this need, I, I agree with you that this professional would be very helpful to catalyze this, this process. In addition to, to, to that uh, need for the field to, to prosper, if you could choose one, one area where you would say this would have the highest impact as we go about implementing regenerative medicine in the clinic, what is the biggest hurdle that you would say this is something that, that really if we were to eliminate it, will, will, it would be very, um, very helpful. Well, the hurdles uh, are, are specific. I mean, there are general hurdles that people often refer to. And one commonplace in this kind of conversation is, well, the hurdle is that it's difficult to translate uh, discoveries into the clinic because of regulatory difficulties, the difficulties in getting the clinical trials. I do not subscribe to that view. I do not think that that is, in fact, a major hurdle. Um, I do believe that hurdles are specific to each specific application. So you can identify one hurdle in the bone area or a completely different one in the cardiovascular area. And the nature of the hurdle is not the same. It can be strictly technological in one area, for example, which is the best scaffold that is biodegradable and osteoconductive for me to regenerate a femur in humans, to hurdles that are, as we were mentioning before, emanating from gaps in knowledge. Uh, then there are more general hurdles, and that would bring this conversation into a, a, a different area, that is, are we dealing with the proper format for the development of technologies, the funding of this kind of endeavor, and the testing? of the emerging kind of therapies. But that, I suspect, would be a topic that will require a conversation on its own. Yeah, I agree with you that it's a very complex topic that, that needs a lot of attention. And I hope that some of the conversation this afternoon at the event will, will address some of these issues. Uh, but with that, I would like to thank you for being here again and for uh, agreeing to the interview. Thank you. Thank you.